good evening everyone uh, i am mohit i am based out of india i work at red hat as a senior software engineer and today we are going to see that uh, how easy it can be to deploy your java applications on uh, openshift for instance and performing an end to end environment using a vs code editor so uh, as a normal developer uh, the idea we have is so we have a java application so we have a back end server we have a front end in interface we need to integrate them and then we deploy those on a cube, cube instance or say an open shift instance so we have a cli tool for that we have editor where we code our java application and then we have a different console for open shift to deploy this so a uh, basically a three step scenario uh, uh, more than three step scenario so in this talk what we are going to say is that we are going to create an extension pack where basically you will have all those extensions needed to create your java applications and deploy uh, the, that code directly into openshift using your vs code editor so you did not switch different terminals different consoles to perform that operation everything can be done directly on the uh, vs code instance so let's move forward and see how things are so the first question we have is why do we need an extension pack or say what is an extension pack so in a uh, vs code editor we have a concept known as extensions basically those are uh, the plugins which are integrated into your editor where you can perform different operations for this say we i need to create a game based out of java, where the scenario is more or less related to java and it can be different so it can be a node js also it can be a go application it can be python or anything right now uh, if i i am a developer i need to know okay how java language works what are the syntax how i need to debug it how maven works all those nuances are needed to be known and for every scenario there are different plugins so in this extension pack what we have done at red hat is we have created one extension pack which will have an uh, extension which does connection to openshift an extension which does your maven plugin an extension uh, which creates a docker hub so all those small extensions are packed into one and are, can directly be installed into vs code so as a developer say you have a specific use case where you need just uh, those set of extensions so you did not install them manually every time you just install that extension pack and that extension pack will perform all those operations for you so uh, as i mentioned uh, what is the use case to have an extension pack so if you have say you have an extension pack where all these steps are done so you can pass that same extension pack to your different team that can be a dev team that can be a qa team or that can be a sre team whatever and they they can use that same extension pack to perform all those operations starting from writing a java code debugging a java code deploying that java code pushing that code to open shift and even maintaining the logs so say if you have a jenkins build running and you need to see the logs you need to again go to jenkins see which logs are there what is failing does your has your build pass or your tar file is uh, broken or not so everything can be directly seen into that editor you need not switch between different terminals and that basically uh, enhances the performance of a developer working on a given scenario the second part is uh, if you have an extension pack just related to say java you work on that extension pack you perform all those operations and you have a separate extension pack which does the same things but not for java that does for python or say does for node so for specific use cases you have specific uh, extension packs and that can be directly installed to your editor vs code uh, from the marketplace so uh, for this uh, talk i will be mostly focusing on that how you can uh, perform an end to end experience for a java app which can be deployed to an open shift cluster directly using this extension pack so say uh, you are a new developer or say you are a very experienced developer whatever the case may be you have a vs code editor into it you install it it does not have any extension right now you go to the marketplace you search for open shift java extension pack and that will prompt you an extension you just down install it and reload it so right now that is not yet published on the marketplace uh, but i think maybe next week we are going to publish on the marketplace but uh, if you go into the visual studio marketplace and search for red hat you will have extensions known as open shift connector Uh, which basically does all this deployment for your java code directly to the open shift cluster whichever open shift cluster is running that open shift cluster can be your a local instance which can be run from say mini shift that's an open source or it can be an on premise open shift instance you just uh, write your code in vs code uh, you create a tar file you create a component on that cluster which is running and just do a push everything from editor and that will be deployed to your instance now say once you have uh, written this java code now you need to debug that java code 
So now if you have to debug it, you need some other plugin for that. But for this extension pack, you need not worry about that debugging. As soon as you have this installed, that uh, whatever code is there, that will automatically prompt you for the debugger. So you can even debug your Java code step by step and see what is breaking and what things are, why it is not deployed on that instance correctly. So uh, the first thing which we have with that extension pack is known as server connector. This server connector is basically uh, gives you uh, advantages to uh, uh, say install and run different dependencies like you want to run a wildfly server or you need to run an EAP server. So you need to download it first, then you need to install it and then you need to use it. With this server connector uh, extension installed in your VS code, you can uh, directly use any wildfly server, say wildfly 14 or 15. Just start it and the server will automatically be started. Now your Java code is already there. Uh, uh, when, once your Java code is already there, click on that uh, server connector and say deploy. So whatever Java code is there, that will be deployed onto that server. Now once that code is deployed onto that server, you need to uh, run it say on, on a cl cluster, right? And that cluster can be anything. Whatever configuration is present in your kubeconfig, say you have a kubeconfig file which basically has different clusters which are running. You can select whatever cluster you want to deploy that file and that whatever build which was there on that server will be directly deployed to your uh, OpenShift instance. So that is the advantage of having a server connector. Uh, so this extension is already there in the marketplace. If you go and search by Red Hat server connector, you will uh, find it. This. The second one in the extension pack is the Docker Explorer. So basically we have uh, this extension to manage your Docker containers, your images, whatever uh, Docker files which are there from your Docker hub will always be listed down in, in this explorer and you can figure it out, okay, this is the Docker container which I need to use or this is the image which I need to use to create that component. And the third one is project initializer. So uh, this is basically, uh, if you are using a say, new Java project, right? You need not know, okay, which source image I need to use or which image is right for that application. So project initializer basically gives you a set of uh, quick start projects which you can directly select, start it, initialize it, all, and all those configurations will, uh, with all those files, with the POM XML files, whatever Maven configurations are there, will be uh, loaded in your local workspace. And you can use that local workspace to deploy onto that server which was started using the server connector. And once that is deployed into that connect, uh, server connector, just deploy that code into the, uh, say, OpenShift instance. So everything is connected more or less, whatever you need to do an end-to-end -end, uh, life cycle of that Java application which you want to create. So uh, now these, are, these were some of the extensions which are needed to start your uh, deployment. These are some of the extensions which are needed to configure your Java application. The first one is uh, language support for Java. Basically, this gives you uh, uh, auto completion, whatever uh, language support we, you need for Java, whatever the files, whatever the functions which are needed for your Java classes. Those things are give, uh, given by language support. And I think this extension currently has approximately 1.2 um, million downloads currently in Visual Studio Marketplace. So, so this is one of the most usable extensions at, in VS Code. And this is supported by Red Hat. The second one is debugger for Java. So whatever code you have in your Java application, you definitely you need to debug it and you need to see what are the step-by-step -step executions which are done. So this extension will help you to uh, debug your code. And the third one is Maven Project Explorer. Basically, whatever uh, types you have in your uh, Java project, whatever POM XML file or whatever uh, Maven file you have, you need to check that, okay, is this POM XML file correct? Can this be built to create a new tar file? Can this be uh, deployed onto that Wildfly server I am running or an EAP server I am running? So this Maven Explorer will give you all those scenarios and hints and auto-completions to configure your application and make it correct. So if you see uh, the overall flow from start to end for that uh, Java application can be done with all these extensions which are there for you. So as a new developer or even as a senior developer, this saves you time to not worry about what are the smaller nuances needed for that. You have everything uh, set up in that VS Code. It will prompt you for all those changes. It will prompt you for all those builds. It will even start your uh, servers which are running. You need not go to any command line to start your Wildfly server or download that Wildfly and then start it. So everything is there for you. You just need to work on your code, create that, build it, deploy it, and that's how the end-to-end -end life cycle will work. 
So uh, the basic idea of having this uh, collection of extension pack is, as a developer, uh, we want to uh, write more code at, so that it is not giving us nuances that, oh, do I need to learn OpenShift? Do I need to know how QConfig works? Or do I need to find out where is my Wildfly server running? So everything which is running on your VS Code editor directly, you, need, you know that, okay, these are my logs, these are my server which are running, these are my different configurations which are there, and these are uh, how things can be integrated. So this gives you one end goal that, okay, as a developer, I know what my uh, situations are for a given extension pack. Now in this extension, OpenShift extension pack, right now I'm covering for Java, but uh, in the future we are also going to support whatever languages you know. As a developer, if you are comfortable with Node, this works with the OpenShift extension pack. If you're comfortable with Go, this works the same way. The example with Java was that there are the adaptation of Java is more with developers. So we started with OpenShift extension pack for Java. But going ahead, uh, every language will be supported. And on-premises and even on the local shift, OpenShift is supported. So uh, for example, if you need to just test and deploy for just your one Jenkins build, you can just run your local instance. You can just start your Minishift instance directly from the server connector that gives you uh, the options to download Minishift, start the Minishift version, and just start your uh, OpenShift cluster. Now, as your OpenShift cluster is running, you create a Java component. Your Java code is there in the local workspace. Just create a component from a work local workspace. A new component will be created. And once that new component is created, you just do a push. So that push will directly go to the cluster which is running, and that will be deployed. Now. Uh, you need to make some changes to the code. As soon as you make some changes to the code, a new build, uh, um, as we have the Maven Explorer there, a new build is generated. And as and the new build generates, creates a new tar file, and that new tar file will again be deployed to that OpenShift cluster, which is there. So you have that end-to-end -end experience uh, working for a Java application throughout seamlessly. Now if you need to see, OK, what are the logs which are running? Do I need to check, uh, are the logs correct? Are the deployment correct? So everything can be seen directly on the terminal. And in the VS Code Editor terminal, you need not uh, go to a different console, a different terminal. And you can see what logs are there, what Maven configuration is there, what build is running from Maven. Uh, is there any incorrect data in my pom.xml file or how the scenario is? So everything in that interface install using this OpenShift extension pack. Now, the, uh, I have been asked uh, this question uh, many a times is that if I have this OpenShift, uh, uh, can I just work with one extension and not use this extension pack? You can definitely work ahead with one extension, just have an OpenShift extension to uh, connect and just deploy into that uh, uh, OpenShift instance. But the use of this extension pack is it provides you many other advantages like a debugger is there. Explorer is there, even uh, running different servers, like running Wildfly servers, EAP servers, Minishift, running those servers directly on your VS Code editors, this extension pack will help you in doing all those scenarios at one point and just enabling you that end-to-end -end life cycle of a developer very easier. So uh, I think this is what I had for this talk. Um, so you have any questions that how this works or how the scenarios are, uh, please feel free to ask. I think I have some time, right? So if you uh, need to see that how the project is going, we have a GitHub instance, uh, GitHub slash Red Hat dash developer. If you go into that, you can find all those projects which are listed, how things are working, how things are. And uh, that's it. And we have uh, the server connector, the project initializer, and the OpenShift connector already uh, there in the VS Code marketplace and the language support for Java. As I mentioned, we have approximately 1.2 million downloads for ja language support for Java. The OpenShift connector currently has been launched uh, two months back, and it has approximately 2,000 downloads. And the project in license was launched uh, last week. So we are continuously working on this to upgrade the developer experience, and more and more extension packs will be coming in the future for the developers to work on different languages. Right now, we have for Java, but in the future, we'll be supporting uh, all the other say primary languages we developer work on. So, uh, no questions? Okay, thank you.